When testing web applications, we usually want to make sure to decouple our application from API services, for example. So in a microservices-based architecture, we often rely on mocking for decoupling our application from HTTP services. But in a microservices-based architecture, we also want to make sure that when we finally deploy our application, everything still works. And this can be a problem when we mock all of our services. So today I want to show you how we can use a technique called contract testing to make sure that we have the safety net that whenever we deploy our application, we still can be sure that it will work with the real services as well, because they all adhere to the same contracts. So let's imagine the following system. Imagine we have a couple of services, for example, an off service for authorization and authentication. And we might also have a product service. And in the real system, we might have a couple of other services as well, but for now, those two will do. And now let's imagine we have an e-commerce application because we have products. So let's imagine we have an, an online shop and this might be based on Next or Next.js or whatever. So a web app. And this web app communi communicates with the authentication service and also this product service. Okay, so now we want to test our e-commerce application. And when we want to test it, we can't rely on other services. So we have to replace those services for testing with mocks, for example. So let's move them to the side and, or let's copy them. And let's say we have an off mock here and also a product mock. Okay, so now we can run our tests without relying on external services, which is fine. But now let's imagine this authentication service team change something to the service. So this service might respond with a different data structure for now. So this team makes the change and the e-commerce team runs its tests against the old mock because for some reason they don't know that a change were made here and this team forget to notify that team and stuff happens and they deploy the application but it fails in production although the tests were green and this can happen because the mocks have to stay in sync with the services which not always might be the case at least if there is no automatic way of how you can ensure that those two stay in sync. And that's where contract testing comes in. Because with contract testing, we now remove those mocks. We don't have mocks in, in the traditional sense anymore. But instead, the authentication service defines a specification. So let's take a look how this might look. So now here we have a specification for example, the authentication spec file. And this is defined by the authentication service. And the ecom app in the test now specifies an expectation. So this ecom app might say it has an expectation when, when it makes a request to the authentication service to slash login, then it expects to get, for example, a name and a user ID or something like that. Okay, so this is specific, the, the expectation is specified by the ecom app and the specification by the authentication service. And now those two, let's name them. This is the specification and this is in the open API format. We'll show you this later. And we also have this expectation here. And this is a JSON format, which we will all also see later. 
and those two make up the contract. So this is the contract between the two uh, of the authentication service and the e-commerce app. Something like that. Okay, so, and the same happens for the product service as well. So the product service also specifies a specification and the ecom app define in its test also multiple one or multiple expectations. And therefore we will also have one or multiple contracts between the product service and the ecom service. And what you can see here is that those two are decoupled. So instead of somehow having to sync mocks or something like that, those two files are completely decoupled. And now imagine the same case we had before, the authentication service team changed something. So they have to reflect this in their specification file because if their specification file doesn't match how their service behaves for real, then their build pipeline will fail. But they don't rely on expectations at this point. So they can change their specification and be sure that everything works as they specified. And as long as everything works as they specified, they are safe. And now the ecom team can have expectations. And when they deploy the application, then their deployment pipeline will check if those expectations match the specification of the authentication service, for example. And if their expectation doesn't match the specification, then their build pipeline will fail. So during development, those two teams are completely decoupled, but still when either of those two teams deploys their application or service, they will be notified if some of the changes breaks a consuming application, for example, in the, in the case of the service. So now let's take a look how this looks in practice. And for this, we will use a tool that I really, really like, which is called Specmatic. Specmatic is a tool that helps us with contract testing. And for this, I set up a very simple demo application, which I always use for demoing my testing stuff, which is a very straightforward shopping list. So you can add milk, for example, and the milk will be on the list and then you can remove it again. So for this, I've set up a specification file. So this is the file that we defined here. This is the specification for a service. In this case, we have an item service, an item API. And here we specify we have multiple paths. And I used YAML file here, but you can also use JSON. This is an open API specification file. So this is a standard. This is a nice thing about Specmatic that it doesn't give you any proprietary format, but you can use open API specs and you don't have to use some special syntax or even an SDK or something like that. It's all just standards. Okay, so here we have this open API spec for this item service and this item service specifies that we have a path for slash items ID and for, and we listen uh, for this path for delete HTTP verbs. So if there is a delete request on the items endpoint with an ID, then we respond, for example, with a 200 response. But we expect certain parameters to be there, like an ID, for example. And we do this for all our endpoints. So we also have an, an endpoint for, for post for items to create new items. And we specify which values we need in the body and which response types we have. And I only defined 200 response types because this is just an example and I'm lazy. Usually you would also specify your error responses here, for example, 401 or like 500 error states. And we also have a get request here. Okay, this is our specification file for an items API. And now let's take a look at a test that we wrote. 
So here we have an item or a shopping list specification file. And in this shopping list specification file, we, for example, say it should be possible to add items to the list. And we also say it should be possible to remove items from the list. And then in the test, we specified that the user is logged in, the user has items, and those are our preconditions. And then we open the shopping list application, we add a new item, and we expect a new item to be on the list. So I've started Playwright right here. So when we run this test here, we can see that it fails because we didn't start our mock server yet. And this is also something very awesome about Spagmatic that it provides us with a stub server. This means I can say Spagmatic stub and then I pass it the path where my specifications, specification files are located and it will start up a stub server, which we can use in our tests. And now if I run the test again, then I see my test runs through and we can take a look at the output of our stub server just to show you what happens in the background. In the background, we tell and I will show you this in the test as well, we tell Spagmatic that if a request is made for slash items with a post method, then it should respond the certain way. It should respond with a new item, basically, which has a, an ID, a user ID, and a title. And here we see that this happened. So there was a request made with the following request body and it returned this response. And in our test, this looks the following. In our test, we have a shopping list domain specific language. And in here, we said, when we make an add item request to items, or when, when the user add an items, then a request happens to slash items with the post method. And then we can say what we want to return. So in this body, we specify what we want to return in case a request to slash items happens. And we also specify how the request body looks like. And now if we go in our mock endpoint function in the playwright driver right here, then we see what happens here is instead of mocking, like with, with the playwright mocking function that we see beneath. So this would be how we do it if we use the playwright mocking functionality. Instead of using that one, we are using the Spagmatic stub server. And here we make a query to the Spagmatic stub server to the expectations endpoint and tell it in case of a request made with a given path and a given method, and a given request, request body, please respond with the following HTTP response, which we specify via the status property and the body property. So when we go back to our DSL, we can see here, we say if a request is made to the slash items path with post method and the following request body, please respond with that one. And that's how we set up the Spagmatic stub server. And because we do all of that with all of our, in all of our tests, like for example, here we have this, it should be possible to remove items. Here, first of all, we say that, or we make sure that the user is logged in, for example. It's also worth pointing out. And then we can delete items by specifying in the remove item function that whenever a request, a delete request is made to the slash items endpoint, then it should return with a success. When we take a look at our should be possible remove items test, we see this works as well. Okay, and with that, we have the following achieved. We have a specification file, which we saw here. So here, this item YAML file 
in which we specified all the endpoints and, and stuff. We have expectations in the JSON format. We use dynamic expectations like we saw in our test. So this here, what we see here is the expectation, or at least here we set up the expectation. And inside of our driver, we send the expectation in the format in which the stub server of Specmatic expected, expect, expects it. And with that, we have our contract. And with that, we can test our applications, which without relying on mocks and with the certainty that when we deploy our application, everything will still work as expected, even though we didn't test the whole system with all the services, but we can rely on the contracts specified by the service team.